Hey everybody, what's up? So, uh, today is gonna be kind of interesting because I thought I would be covering the, uh, big announcement that happened yesterday. I thought maybe we'd have Let's Go Johto to talk about, or maybe even the announcement of Diamond and Pearl remakes, but, uh, that did not happen. We actually got a game called Pokemon Unite instead to the surprise and kind of the chagrin of everyone at the same time. So instead, we're going to be talking about something a little bit different, but it's still really interesting. Not to get your hopes up or anything after they were probably just dashed by that Pokemon Unite announcement, but I thought it would be fun to talk about some hints to Diamond and Pearl remakes that are in the Pokemon Sword and Shield expansions, both the Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra. This could be somewhat of a shorter video because it's not like there's just Diamond and Pearl remake hints flying all over the place, but there were some interesting ones that are really worth talking about that I think are fun to bring up, so without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so this first one is going to be kind of short and sweet because it's something that I actually revolved a video around a few days ago, but there is one additional detail I wanted to add onto it that further supports the idea that this could be a hint towards Sinnoh Remake. Quick spoiler warning if you have not finished the Isle of Armor yet, but about a week or so ago I made a video talking about the idea that Cub Fu and its evolution Urshifu could be possibly from the Sinnoh region because they're not originally from Galar, and the whole quest revolving around getting some honey for Urshifu so it can Gigantamax could be a hint at what's to come in the Sinnoh remakes in the form of how they're going to bring Dynamaxing and Gigantamaxing to the Sinnoh games. I would recommend going to watch that video if you want the full length explanation, but basically what happens is when you're trying to get that max honey for Urshifu so it will drink the max soup and Gigantamax, you end up getting it from a Vespaquin, which is a Sinnoh Pokemon number one, and then number two, Hop makes a really offhand obscure comment about how the max honey and the max mushrooms that you use for Dynamaxing and Gigantamaxing seem to be very uniquely tied to those two phenomena, and it seems like that might actually be the way that they carry this Dynamaxing mechanic over to the Sinnoh region, because it's normally something that is unique and exclusive to the Galar region, but obviously it makes sense to have this feature carry over into any other Generation 8 games, so if you did it in the form of an item like Max Mushrooms or Max Soup that you gave your Pokemon to then allow them to Gigantamax and Dynamax, that really does make all the sense in the world. So that's what we talked about in last week's video, but what I did not mention is an additional detail that further adds to the likelihood of this possibility, and it all has to do with the creator of the Max Soup herself, Honey. Honey is Mustard's wife that lives with him on the Isle of Armor, and as her League card states, she is the creator of the Max Soup. But not only that, it also talks about how it's basically her goal to one day be able to sell the Max Soup pre-made and ready to go worldwide. Now, I don't know about you guys, the fact that we have this statement that says that Honey wants to sell Max Soup worldwide, as in to other regions of the Pokemon world, it seems to fit together a little too nicely to not mean anything. It could ultimately just be a coincidence, but it seems to fit together really, really well. The fact that that statement supports my previous theory so well when I wasn't even aware of it at the time really makes me believe even more that the Max Soup is going to have something to do with how we Dynamax our Pokemon in the Diamond and Pearl remakes if they happen in Gen 8, and the fact that you've also got Max Honey involved when Honey was introduced in the Sinnoh games, it just seems to all come together too well, so I really, really do expect if the Diamond and Pearl remakes happen soon for that to be the way that you end up Dynamaxing your Pokemon in those games. This next one isn't really a hint in the traditional sense, instead it's more like a sign of things to come, but I really do think it is a sign of what's to come and what could come in the Diamond and Pearl remake. 
things. And that would have to do with the mechanic of Pokemon following you. Pokemon following you made a surprise return back into the games in the Isle of Armor expansion for Sword and Shield, and even though it doesn't have anything inherently to do with the Sinnoh games, there is one extremely similar parallel that it does have with the Sinnoh games in relation to its own. In Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, there was a location in the Sinnoh region known as Amity Square, whose main purpose was to allow you to walk around with your Pokemon with them following behind you. However, this feature was limited to just this one specific area in the game. As we ultimately learned a few years later, this proved to ultimately be a testing ground for what was to come in the full-blown Pokemon following you mechanic that we saw in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, where every single Pokemon could follow you around throughout the entire game. And this very much parallels what's currently going on in Pokemon Sword and Shield, where in the base game you're not able to have Pokemon following you around, but now in one specific area, much like Amity Square, you are able to have your Pokemon follow you around, even if it is limited to this one specific place. So what if we have a case of history repeating itself here, where not only was this added into the Isle of Armor expansion as an added bonus, but the expansion is also serving as a testing ground, if you will, and is a sign of things to come in the Diamond and Pearl remakes, where we will be able to have Pokemon following us throughout the entire game. That really does make a lot of sense on its own, but in addition to that, it also seems to fit really well considering that we had that feature first introduced in the Diamond and Pearl games even if it was just in Amity Square. And Amity Square as a location doesn't really make a lot of sense in a high-tech Diamond and Pearl remake considering that its only purpose was to allow you to have Pokemon following behind you when now with the remakes it could just as easily happen throughout the entire game. So unless Amity Square became some kind of wild area type location with the same purpose, which I really doubt considering it was a small location in the original games, I really do see it likely that we will have Pokemon following us in the entire Diamond and Pearl remake games with what we now have in the Isle of Armor expansion as a small sample size and a sign of things to come, just like it was a sign of things to come in the Diamond and Pearl games for the eventual feature in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Consider this next one somewhat of a minor spoiler for the Crown Tundra, as it has to do with some data mined information for that second half of the expansion that does seem to contain a hint at Diamond and Pearl remakes possibly coming soon. Thanks to a data mine, it seems to be the case that all of the returning Pokemon from the Crown Tundra expansion have been leaked and subsequently already confirmed months ahead of time. And amongst that list of Pokemon, there seems to be a very curious omission. And that omission would be both of the Gen 4 fossil families consisting of Shieldon, Bastiodon, Cranidos, and Rampardos. Now, a couple random families of Gen 4 Pokemon not being included in this expansion is hardly enough to say that Gen 4 remakes are on the way. But what makes this situation especially curious is that literally every other fossil Pokemon in existence, aside from the Gen 8 ones, of course, are being introduced in this expansion specifically. This seems very suspicious and seems like they are withholding these Pokemon from the games so they can introduce them in the Diamond and Pearl remakes and expand the Pokedex even further for Generation 8 in those titles. This is nothing more than just a hunch right now, but it does seem to be a solid bit of evidence towards the Sinnoh remakes coming in the somewhat near future. This next one is a rather obvious one that has been talked about for a little bit with some additional detail that was just added recently right before the Isle of Armor was released. Obviously the appearance of the two new Regis, Reggie Alecki and Reggie Drago in the Crown Tundra seems to definitely connect to Regigigas, a Sinnoh Pokemon, thereby also possibly connecting to Diamond and Pearl Remake. In Regidrago's description on the Sword and Shield website, it even mentions Regigigas by name as having created it, so it definitely does seem to be the case that it is just as involved with these two new Regis as it was with Regirock, Regice, and Registeel. 
The other thing that does seem to lend itself to the idea that these could be connected to Diamond and Pearl remakes are the little bits of gameplay that we received showing additional footage of encountering the Reggies in the Crown Tundra expansion in a recent trailer. In that most recent trailer, we see the player encountering these Reggies using the same puzzle method for the Reggies to unlock them that was used in Pokemon Platinum version. So could this be a sign of once again Diamond and Pearl remakes on the horizon, with these Reggies having a connection to it, or is this just a rehash of older mechanics? It's hard to say right now with the Crown Tundra not even being out yet and still a couple months away, but it is very interesting to take note of, especially as we approach the expansion and as we approach next year, where a huge game is sure to be coming out since it is Pokemon's 25th anniversary. And last but not least, as you may be well aware, the Isle of Armor expansion released earlier this month on June 17th, and it just so happens to be the case that the birthstone for the month of June is none other than the Pearl. So uh, yeah, you might as well go ahead and put your pre-orders in right now because that's a confirmation if I've ever seen one, and I've got to give a shout out to one of my Facebook followers, Lex Stewart, for pointing this out to me. But on the side of things that can actually be considered somewhat of a more legitimate hint, even though it doesn't have to do directly with the Sword and Shield expansion, it is absolutely 100% a hint made by the Pokemon Company themselves. In a tweet earlier this year commemorating the North American release of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, they began their tweet with the caption, confirmed, as in Sinnoh confirmed, as in they know we want it, they know we're talking about it, and they're hinting it because they've got something behind the scenes that they just can't quite tell us yet, but they're more than happy to tease us about it. It's also worth noting that this tweet, and therefore the North American release of Diamond and Pearl, occurred in April, which just so happens to have the diamond as its birthstone, so uh, you might say that it all comes together. Well, there you have it everybody, those were some fun kinda hints and foreshadowings to Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remakes in the Sword and Shield expansions. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like, be sure to comment down below, and subscribe if you haven't already for more Pokemon content. If you'd like to support the channel further and also hear me talk about Pokemon more, be sure to check out my Pokemon podcast over on the UCAST Studios YouTube channel. I run it every week. I do long-form Pokemon discussions. If you like Pokemon podcasts, I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. And I've also got, of course, my Pokemon Cardinal project, if you haven't seen that yet either. With that said though, I'll be back on Saturday with another video, so be sure to hit the notification bell for that, and until then, as always, I hope you know I love you guys very much, I hope you're having a great day, and I will smell you guys later.